morning garden. Oh, hello. Three people joined so far. That's pretty good. Oh, hello. Thanks for the thumbs up. I'm sitting here. I tried to get out onto my property today to do some more planting of more collard greens. But I said, no, wait till tomorrow morning when it's nice and cool. You don't have to get out there in 90-degree uh, weather trying to dig holes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Everyone, everyone. I like that when they call, uh, tune in and say hello to everybody. That, that's a good thing. You, you ever have, I don't know if you ever uh, you know, had someone come into a room and they don't say hello. Kind of, you know, not so good. But what what we're here and gardening is the thing and fall gardening sometimes can be better than summer gardening. Reasons: one, you don't have to deal with as many insects. Two, it's a lot cooler to work in the soil. And three, mm, and it's the best part: you get to grow Georgia collard greens and kale. So all in all, everything's looking good. Um, I had a, one of my uh, people to come over and talk to me today while I was at work. And it, and they said, uh, listen, I, I want to let you know, I, I put my collard greens in the ground. And, and the person is a relatively new gardening, gardener. I got her into gardening. And she is enjoying herself and learning quite a bit about gardening. And she's ahead of the game because it's like having a coach just walking you through everything. Uh, let's see. Hi, good, uh, hi, morning, garden. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in, standing, standing in the room, and and, and we're gonna get the, this conversation started. And learn some things about <laughs> gardening, especially fall gardening. One of my favorites is fall gardening. I have worked sixteen hours, sixteen hours, sixteen hours, and now I am here. Hello, everyone in the gardening family. Ah, that's a good one. <laughs> I like that one. That's good. Ah, uh, but but the thing about it is, I I'm so glad that that people are catching on and they're starting to grow uh, their gardens because uh, growing the gardens with the economy the way it is now. And, and tell me something, folks. Uh, is gas prices still going up? In the areas you uh, live in, or has they come to like a standstill? Because right now, ours is at a. I, I think it went down some, but I'm not 100 sure. Hello, everyone. Everyone, everyone. Yes, yes. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for stopping by. Um, I have um. I have, uh, I'm very excited about my, my trees. I got them topped off. Uh, I think I'm going to be very successful next year with the fruit production. Uh, and then something else I'm going to implement in my garden, which is uh, uh, sunflowers. I never grew those before, but they use them as pollinators, bring in the pollinators. Gas prices. Are they going up or down in your location? Gas prices. Because where I'm living, they seem to be, uh, I think they dropped a, a, a few percentage, but not but not by very much. Um, and we got a lot of things going on in the news as far as uh, political things going on. It's always a hot cake. People like to get away from it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm not going to spend any time on it just to say, you know, it's a good thing that we're growing food. Because that's going to give you an uh, uh, that's going to be an ace ace and all. Now I had to go out and collect my some of my uh, what they call it uh, uh, okra seeds that I, that I grew this year. I grew just the seeds because when I get low in seeds, I, I just want to get a good production of seeds going, and you know, so I'll have some seeds in stock. 
Okra seeds, I have I've been uh, for the last uh, six about six years. I bought one pack of seeds from uh, a seed store online, and I've been just what I would do is I would grow so much and eat what I'm going to eat, and then I let the rest of them go to seed. And so I've been I've been deal, doing that for years. Uh, another success uh, that I did is I, I went to a grocery store and I purchased a few pieces of about like that, maybe three pieces of uh, ginger. And I've been growing that stuff for years and I'm getting pounds of it out of just those little three pieces like that. I paid about um, a dollar and uh, a dollar, what was a dollar 25 cents. And back during that time, uh, ginger was 3.99 a pound. And part, the pieces I got weren't all that healthy of pieces. They weren't very, you know, they've been there for a while in the store. Uh, but I put them in and got them in correct conditions and they just started growing and I just kept growing and growing. And each year I would take from it and then I would keep a few, which I call my seed stock. I would keep them, I'd dry them up a little bit and then I would uh, put them in uh, the soil, put them in an area that's not a lot of sun at and keep them moist, keep them around room temperature and then bring them back out in the, uh, in the, uh, what we call it, the, um, uh, the yard and get everything back prepped up and put them in a bigger container and they would just take off and start growing again uh i did that i did that for years i mean i grew big pieces of uh a ginger that i mean that made you go wow this is um uh, I, I some people are paying four dollars a pound for it and if, if they really like ginger and make teas out of them and cookies and cakes and whatever and i was growing it about a pound and and it, and, and it was just so easy to grow. Uh, some, of, some of the information was kind of incorrect that I got from people. Uh, the, uh, you know, they were saying, grow it in a sunny location. And I was growing it in um, uh, partial shade, partial sun. And it did, it, did, it did very well. But when I put it out into the sun, it started turning brown. I took it back from the sun, it started greening up again. So that's how I grew it. Folks. Make certain that you enjoy your garden. Uh, if you get a chance, if you're having any issues with your uh, garden, if you're having any issues, get a soil test. Get a soil test done. Get a soil test done. Uh, morning Garden, what's up? What's up is gardening, especially in this economy. In this economy, it is a good thing to be able to grow something. Uh, I'm having people walk by me now. I'm, I'm getting some notoriety, uh, and people walking by me and, and knowing who I am and that sort of thing. That's that's kind of interesting. I've been doing this a lot of years, but when you go into a garden store, um, and someone says, "I know you from somewhere," and and uh, and they say, "Morning, morning gardener, right? Morning gardener." And I say, "Oh yeah, thank you." And then we wind up talking for 45 minutes, and I forget some of the things I came in the shop for. But it was nice uh, running to across that person, uh, and and I gave them some information you know, on on what they were trying to do. They were trying to grow an apple tree in their yard, and he had the whole thing. I don't know where he got his information from, but I said, "Sir, this tree is not going to stay small. This is a standard uh, apple tree. How big is your yard?" I asked him. He said, uh, four feet by ten feet." I said, "No, this is not going to work." I said, I mean, you can keep it small, but you're going to be, you're going to be beating this tree up trying to keep it small. Yes, yes. I said, uh, but, but, uh. Uh, I'm gonna say, but well, we had them here at uh, three dollars each one time, and that was in a big major uh, grocery store. Um, have to tell me, have you ever tried growing uh, pomegranates? Have you tried growing them? Butternut squash cost four dollars. Oh my God! And it's so easy to grow. All you need to do, folks, listen to me, uh, and I'm not gonna get preachy. Sometimes I can get that way, but 
the leaves, the leaves, when they fall in the fall, remember those leaves, those leaves are black gold. Do not put those in bags and throw them away because you actually are throwing away. It's like, okay, would you take a bag of your fertilizer that you paid $15 for and just chuck it in the trash can? No, you wouldn't do that. That's your money going in the trash can when you do that. When you see those leaves, those leaves are just free uh, of fertilizer. Fertilizer, free. Not yet. I should think about it. Um, the only thing kept me from doing a pomegranate, and that's the only thing that kept me from doing pomegranate, uh, is that um, pomegranate. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Are you still using the? Now, see, this person here obviously know me from the past. They asked me was I still using the same rain barrel system. I made an, an update to it. I said, okay. No, no. I, I, it, listen, when, when something, it's like a good song. You don't need to change it. This, this, rain barrel, so let me tell you what I did with the rain barrel system a couple of days ago. I kept ride, driving by. Uh, car car places where they were washing cars for thirty dollars a pop, and I said, "God, man, I, I really need this." I had a, a white Lincoln that was really filthy, folks. It was just filthy. I mean, well, you don't want to be riding it. We look at the outside of it because it's been sitting for a while. So what happened is uh, I came home and I didn't want to run it on the city's water. You know, my water. You know, run my water bill up because. It's, it's, you know, everything's expensive here in Maryland. So what I did was I just hooked the hose up. No, no, but the hose already hooked up. I just simply put another nozzle on the front of the rain barrel hose, which is 100 feet, cut the pump on and wash both vehicles spotless and use pure rain water to do it. And it felt good. And I got 100 gallons of water sitting out there. Uh, it's It should be low, close to halfway i've been watering the garden i've been washing cars um i've been i've been doing everything with it and it's 100 gallons is enough for me 100 gallons i was and i was going to make this system originally a 200 gallon system but i'm glad i didn't because that water would just sit there and sit there and sit there but it wouldn't hurt anything come to think of it and when it rains it fills those barrels up real quick don't don't let the smooth taste fool you it fills those barrels up fast and the system that I have is completely enclosed. It does not allow for mosquitoes and bugs to get in there to that water. And I love that about my system. The whole thing is enclosed. Um, and I put the ball valves on them. If somebody want to go look at some of my um, uh, videos about the rain barrels, uh, yeah, you, you'll see. You'll see. I did the manifold system out of three eighths. Uh, uh, what they call that stuff called PVC. And I'm gonna tell you something. I did it. That system is still sitting there. I'm glad the rain, uh, the sun didn't burn it up, the piping, you know, it didn't get brittle yet. Um, and I'm gonna tell you something. If I get a rain tonight and it rained for half an hour, the burrows be plumb full. It wouldn't even take a half an hour. And when you water your garden with that kind of water, folks, it makes for a better tasting plant, better tasting food, or fruits, everything. Because you're giving it natural nature. You're just giving it to the plant. When you take water from your house, I've said this before, and they put chemicals in that water to do what? To kill things, to kill bacteria, germs, and all that. That's what they put in the water. When you put that on your garden, you know, you're you're giving your your garden a major shock to, to set set it back each time, setting it back. You need all that bacteria and, and, and everything to live in the soil that that, that break down foods and uh, it feeds your plants and that sort of. You need that in the soil, but when you uh, use that uh, that uh, water from the uh, house, you're doing it. And I understand some of you have to because 
you know, you might not be the kind of person like I am. I'll, I'll go out there and, and I was driving around like a crazy person when I started learning about rain barrel systems. I had a car. I had, uh, I drove around. I stopped in places. Hey, uh, what are you going to do with those rain barrels out there? One, one neighbor gave me a rain barrel. He gave it to me. Uh, he said, I got a 55 gallon one in the back of my yard. You can have it. Well, he had it. They weren't doing nothing with it. And then, I, and then, uh, then it was another place I went. He sold it to me for $5. He sold me one. Um, okay, scorching, scorching there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but what happened was when I got when I got done with uh, I live in Baltimore with container garden. My water bill was oh oh that's all okay. Yeah, and that's what, wait a minute, folks, just one second here, I want to, just one second, I, I know you got a lot of questions and answers going through, but listen, that is the same way I look at it, right there, a person uh, living in Baltimore, uh, Rogers, uh, the reason why I, I when, they, when they started talking here in Mer Maryland about the rate heights that the water would get to, that they were talking about 30% increases and that sort of thing. When they start talking about that, we, and we're getting we're getting hit pretty good now. Um, I said, "Oh my God, how am I going to water an entire garden? And how am I going to water all these fruit trees? How am I going to water? Why? How, how am I going to do this with and keep my costs down? My big thing too is keeping the costs down. So what I did was I came up with an idea, which was rain barrels, what I, that I kept seeing online. And I said, I got to have a rain barrel system. But I was watching people online. They were cutting holes with saws and all that. I didn't do none of that. I did none of that. Because I knew if I'm cutting holes in there, there's stuff I got to fix later. And so one gentleman had on there a beautiful system with what he called a manifold system. And all it was was he connected PVC to all the openings that were naturally there in the, um, in the, uh, the, the container. And... You know, you just simply connect PVC to it and put your valves in, you know, and and whatever direction you're going in, put your uh, elbows in there, your 45 degree elbows and all that. And it was easy. To, I had a tool that, that, that you push, you pump it, and it cuts PVC. I don't know what they call it, but uh, it cuts it. So I didn't have to use a saw or none of that. I just measured everything twice and cut once. And I just cut, cut. And then I put these barrels together, turn them upside down, put them uh, two center blocks under them on each side. That way, I have that pressure, that back pressure. That, you know, if I if I decided not to hook it to a hose, I could open the valve and it'll come pour it out. You know. So what would happen is, what would happen was, I had the answer, uh, folks. I had the answer, and, and I knew I wasn't going to be forced into paying high bills for my my God. All right, let's see. Thank you for uh, Yeah, the system is easy to make. It's easy to make. Um, and, and let me tell you something else. You screw everything together. You get the three, three, four uh, ball joints. Use the ball joints. Don't get the, the, the round valves that do this. Don't get those. Do not get those. The, the ball valve, uh, PVC ball valves, they just last. So much longer and they're more durable um but at any rate uh you get all that done and you're going to be happy with the outcome uh the the barrel uh even the one that the the, the where i connected it into the um downspout when i connected it into the downspout if you look at that that is sealed so it will Fill the barrels up. Here's what it does. This is the one thing I like about the the uh, the system that I've got to connect it to the uh, to the gutter. It'll fill the barrels up, and then and once it's full, it'll divert it back out the normal way. Beautiful. And you don't have to do anything. You don't have to think about anything. The only thing about a rain barrel system is this: when it starts getting down around freezing, you want to open the valve and let it drain out slowly, and let all of that go. Let it go. Let it all drain out because once you let it drain out, it'll empty the system out. You let it drain out slow enough. That way it don't 
flood all into the, the ground and everything. Just let it drip out of this flow. And you empty those barrels out. Then you remove the part from the gutter so that it doesn't keep filling all winter. And it's just a beautiful thing. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, so you, you, you've never had pomegranate fruit, but you love the juice, so you've had the fruit. You just had it in its juice form. Uh, let's see what we got here. Great prices. Uh, uh, let's see. Pomegranate trees. Now, you, you got here that uh, pomegranate trees is like uh, a, um, like like gold. Uh, yes, they are. Now, it actually grows a bush, but you can, you can actually, uh, you know, prune it up to look and, and, and kind of behave like a tree. Um, the, uh, the pomegranate can get to be, if, if you don't maintain a pomegranate, if you don't maintain it, you put it in a really good area, where the soil is great, it's getting proper sun and everything, she could get it wide across at 15, 20 feet across and be about that much taller, 20 feet taller, you know. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bush, and it grows a big bush, big bush. Um, and pomegranate is a very, 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 very healthy piece of fruit to eat. Extremely healthy fruit to eat. The only reason why I do not grow them is because I'm at zone 7B. And I'm right there at the cutoff where it's just a little too cold to grow them. Now, I can grow pomegranate, but every year that it gets colder and colder and that the climate keeps shifting towards that, uh, I may be losing uh, a pomegranate uh, uh, bushes. I may be losing them. Uh, let's see, the pomegranate tree is what I Oh, okay, I'll read that. So the bottom line is pumpkin is incredible, incredible fruit. It'll and I know for a fact it will taste way better than the ones you see in the grocery store. It will taste way better than them. Because that's always the case. When you grow apples, they're sweeter, they're better tasting, they're crunchier than anything in a um, in a in a market, in a superstore market. I went to a, a farmer's uh, market here in Maryland. They, they hold it under a bridge uh, here in Maryland. Um, here's the problem with that. I bought Fuji, no, 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 excuse me, Honeycrisp apples from him. And every time I bit into it, within seconds it would turn brown. Seconds it would turn brown. And it had a sweet, weird taste to it. And I didn't like that. And he keeps, But he kept saying something about uh, let's see, what he crossed it with. He said he crossed it with, um, uh, I want to say Fuji is what he said. But it, it was a weird taste. And I hope when mine start producing really well, I hope they don't taste like that. I hope they don't taste like that. Uh, let's see. How do you eat uh, seeds? How do you eat? How do you eat seeds? How do you eat it? Uh, well, I mean, you, you, you kind of suck the juice away from the seeds. Yeah, that's what you do. Suck the juice away from the seeds. And then there's different types of, uh, uh, of pomegranate. Uh, some of the, you know, other varieties have a softer seed in it. Some have a really hard seed. And some of them, people eat the seed as well because it's, soft, it's a soft seed. Uh, questions, how do you find uh, uh, so find lemons, um, cucumber plants? Uh, cucumber, let's see, cucumber, 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 this is where I found a lemon cucumber plant in my compost now, should I pull it up? Uh, let it grow, let it grow, it's only going to make, uh, it's only going to make good compost, let it grow. Um, let's see, compost, let's see, pull it up, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, let it, let it grow, it's not hurting anything, is it? You know, let it grow. Yeah, 
Yep, I'm in zone zone nine. Zone nine. Now this person could grow pomegranate. This person could grow pomegranate. It's called wonderful. It's called one the one you see in the grocery store is is called wonderful. And uh it's a very popular uh one because of its size and, and flavor and uh and it could just basically caught on because of the way it tastes and you know but um it's, there's a number of different varieties of uh of uh pomegranate i mean it's just more than more than just one or two varieties uh but in, in zone nine yeah they can grow but zone seven b and and with this climate uh change thing going on uh we're still moving around we're still moving around uh some of the plants uh that you have now may not grow in your location two or three years from now because of what what's changing um and and you know we got the apple trees they've grown all over the world uh when people ask me that question i said look there are literally thousands of different types of apples thousands of them and apples uh, I mean, they they have made their mark in the world. They are very, very successful uh, uh, plant. I mean, some of them grow small like berries, and some of them grow as big as almost a baby's head. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, apples have been very successful. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, thank you guys. Ah, let's see what's in the what. Okay, they're asking about state, uh, asking about the zone nine. What state are you in? No, yeah, yeah. It's just a beautiful thing. I look at my trees out there, they look so good and they look happy. And, and uh, you know, like I said, I feed them branches, I feed them um, grass clippings, I feed them leaves, I, I mean, weeds. I, I, I mean, I feed them. New Orleans. But the key to everything when you're doing a garden is, is to, to, to know your soil. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I want to see how far my soil has come. I am going to uh, perform some soil tests. And see where my soil is because I have the I have the the, the kit and I wanted to see where I'm at. And the next time I get online, I'll I'll tell everybody what what I found, what my findings were. And see, I'm not a morning gardener. Oh oh oh, I'm out morning gardener. Excuse me. All right, you take care now. Catch you the next time. Good good seeing you. I say hello, er, uh, hello everyone. This is backyard gardener. It's been a while. It's been a while. Wow, it's, it's been a while. And, and I like it when people, they, they say, you know, that they're leaving. If they're leaving, they, they'll, they'll let you know. That way, you know, you, you know that they left. And say, I tried making tea from weeds, but the weeds started taking over my pots. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see what we got here. I tried making tea from the weeds, but the weeds started taking over my pots. How is that possible? Let's see. When I did mine, I put them in a 32-gallon container, filled it up about uh, 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 one-third, filled it with rainwater, and simply left it there. And when I left it there, everything rotted down. And once it rotted down, the uh the tea was then thinned out but by a one part tea to ten parts um uh, uh rain water and i watered my plants and it made the plants jump from the ground i mean it was incredible um i used grass and i used weeds yeah i used grass and weeds yeah I, it, and the soil that you're you're you're, you're talking about I don't know where you got the soil from. I don't know if it came from your yard, if it came in a bag that you purchased. I'm not sure. Container. Okay, let's say container. I guess the seeds. 
When you put them in um, that uh, water, which is uh, use rain water, it can be used. If you use regular water, you want to let it sit for 24 hours uh, to allow it to, to, uh, to, you know, all of the gases and chemicals in it to evaporate from it. Uh, if you're going to use uh, water from um, from your house, that's what I say, from a hose. Uh, but if you use rain water, you just simply put the weeds in there, put them in there. And they will automatically, after about three to four weeks, uh, you, you you're gonna get a you're gonna get a bit of a stench in in um, in, um, in in the uh, the tea process. After about three or four weeks, they're gonna be no smell, and you will look in there. Uh, oh, and then you, you might go through that process where you see all these flying insects in there, hundreds of them everywhere in there, like little flies or whatever. Leave them in there. They only make the tea better. Um, and so, so you know, you're adding nitrogen and all of that to it that you let the flies die in there. Uh, and even though this sounds really, truly disgusting, uh, it makes some of the best fertilizer you could ever get. Because all you're feeding your plants is a liquid form of plants. And that's all you're doing. Makes a really inexpensive fertilizer. I mean, free is is inexpensive. Free. Uh, can I use weed tea in my garden tower straight? No, no, no. You don't want to put it in it. Listen, only thing I would put uh, uh, that straight tea in would be uh, like around a fruit tree or something. But I would never uh, put it in straight to a little plant. Um, you want to just just you want to just dilute it. Uh, if you put one part in there or nine or ten parts of your um, uh, water, you know, you got it. You got it. It's all it is. You can get your milk jug, you put a little bit down the bottom of that milk jug, about like that, about like that, at the bottom of the milk jug. And then you fill the rest up with water. And, and you know, and you pour it around your plants, and you'll see uh, your plants green up real pretty and everything. Yeah. Now, you can also play with the recipe by... Um, adding more uh, uh grass to it than weeds or more weeds than grass and and what they'll do because grasses are very high very high in nitrogen so you can make things really green up sometimes if you look at a plant and it's kind of kind of green you could actually add more nitrogen and have it really green up oh uh, let's see hey y'all happy sunday oh happy sunday to you as well green organic love all right. Name is always good when it has the word love in it. That's always good. Um, yeah, so, so that's what we are right now. So there will come a time where some of you in this room right now will catch on to what a lot of other gardeners are saying, and, and they will learn from you as well, um, where you will stop feeling like you have to purchase fertilizer from the store. It will come a time when you say, if 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 I if I could not afford fertilizer for next spring gardening, I would know how to make my own. And I would be able to make enough of it to be able to grow food with. Now that's what I'm talking about. And you can and you can support yourself. Ah, uh, let's see, I'm still dealing with my Okay. Hmm. All right, let's see what we're going to say. Good. Okay. Well, hello, going to Eric Long. Using mustard greens and shrimp shell. Mustard greens and shrimp shell. You haven't done anything wrong. Remember, if it has been once alive, and it can be fertilizer. Again, if it was once alive, it can be fertilizer. 
If it weren't alive, it could be fertilizer. I'll give you a good example. It is kind of harsh. But if you ever go around an old cemetery and the birds fly throughout those areas every day and they drop seeds from their uh, in their feces. And you know, some of those seeds are tree seeds. And if the funeral yard is not well kept, those seeds will grow. And you will see some of the prettiest, greenest, biggest trees you ever want to see in the cemetery because the, the roots go down inside those boxes and inside those boxes is fertilizer. Nothing but fertilizer that's in those boxes and, and, and it'll live off them for, for years and years and that's how that works. Those boxes. The roots will burrow, burrow a hole in those metal boxes that turn into rust after about a year or two, they turn into rust and and uh, there's nothing in there but the body and uh, the, the cloth material that they had around in the in, in interior um, and, and all of its fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Yep, because we've all used bone meal, blood meal, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, most of our fertilizers come from the farm industry, and that is just simply everything they cut, and, you know, from the birds or whatever, whatever from the hogs. And, um, the farmers used to take uh, cattle, uh, you know, if, if, if back in the day, if one died or whatever, and they just put that bastard in the compost pile and cover it over, and the biology does the rest. It is a natural process. Composting would happen whether you do something or not. It would happen anyway. No, I don't have it. I haven't, haven't tried growing it. But I will say this is that all the things that I grow, I try to find out what grows well in my location. Uh, because I've seen things where I go, oh my God, you know, you look at those. Uh, magazines that are from the uh, stores that sell the seeds and the plants and you go oh my god I got to have this I got to have this and you go and, and they tell you stuff like uh, they'll say it grows in this zone and they'll tell you that and they'll tell you that and then they'll tell you I, I'll give you a good example uh, I bought a cherry bush called a handsome cherry bush it was two different types of, uh, of bushes that uh, grow cherries now I was excited because when I first started gardening, I said, oh man, I could get this garden uh, bush, I might get this bush and I can put it in. And according to the book, it said, we'll get approximately about eight feet tall and four feet wide. No, 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 no. Yeah, eight, yeah, four feet wide. So I had it for two years, it started to produce berries and I was all excited and I, and the birds was about this big, though. About like that. Can you see that? And so there the birds were. And I took the birds. I tasted them. Tasted like a strawberry. I mean, excuse me. Tasted like a cherry. But they were tiny. And they didn't get any bigger. Well, that's what the book said. It says, you know, produces a small berry. All right. So here's the problem with it was. I ain't like them no more. I got tired of my waited two years and this is it. So I gave it to a neighbor of mine next door. And I told him what it was, told him what it would do. And he said, I still want it. He put it in his yard. One thing happened when he dug it up, it took him, uh, he said, it took him, uh, was it two hours to dig it up? Well, anyway, he dug it up. And he took it over there to his yard and he put it in the ground. Um, and it grew. Uh, but over here where the roots were all cut loose, it kept trying to send up all these new plants. And it took me almost close to six months to kill everything over in that area because they just kept coming up, coming up. Uh, so I got them all down. I got them done. Long story short, this plant grew to such size, folks. The book said it would grow approximately eight feet tall and four feet wide. 
Well, that tree, excuse me, that bush is over 20 feet wide and over 25 feet tall. That same bush. And the guy that I gave it to, my neighbor, does nothing to it. Absolutely nothing to it. Period. And that uh, being said, he simply just lets it grow. He doesn't care for it, doesn't fertilize it, water it, nothing. He just leaves it alone. Uh, another story about a lady that I talked to a while back, and she grows uh, peaches on her property, and she does nothing to a peach tree. Some people, see, some people have it like that. They put it in the right spot where it can get what it wants, it needs, and they don't do anything to it. Now, most people fuss over these trees, and they, and they clip every year, and they spray every year, and they do all, and they do all this stuff to the tree. And the tree just sits there and goes, God, I hate this all. They keep clipping away at me. They keep messing with me. They keep giving me these weird fertilizers, some chicken feathers, and all this stuff. I don't want that stuff. I can get my own food if they just leave me be. Some plants will do better if you don't keep fucking on them. And then other plants, uh, uh, they just need constant care. See, I don't want any plants. That, this is just me. This is just me talking. I don't want trees and bushes that need constant care. I don't want them. I mean, it's just too much. It's just too much. I don't want trees that you got constantly fuss over. I want to. I, I see it was a guy that uh, y'all all know him. Uh, well, some of you may know him. I'll put it that way. Be more accurate. Um. And I saw him growing these trees in his in his garage, and he had to put them in there in the winter and take them back out in the spring and all this. That simply means they don't belong there. That's what that means. It means it's a too cold the climate for this tree to survive there. And that's the day with that too. I do feel pretty good now, folks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on out of here because i got gardening on my mind. i got to take some seeds and get some seeds together. And tomorrow morning early, i got to get out there because that's why they call me the morning gardener. i got to get out there early in the morning and put these other collard greens in there. Uh, uh, i got I got, I got got tons of collard greens I put out there. And I will each year grow more and more and more of that because I'm, I'm just sick and tired of, of not having enough of them, folks. The collard greens are so good. I mean, they make you, they just make you just, just strong up in here, you know, just make you strong. And, and, uh, and, you know, and that's what I want. That's what I want. I want collard greens. I want kale, kale and collard greens. And you buy them, and I'm going to start buying them uh, until I start growing my seed stock up again. Because my seed stock, one time I had, I had millions of seeds. And I was just, I, mean, I couldn't even believe how many seeds I had. All right, good people, this has been The Morning Garden. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate you stopped in. Will stop by to see me sometime. And uh, that's called loyalty. So thank you very much. This is The Morning Garden. And remember, as I always say, in every closing, I always say, keep on growing. Thank you. Thank you very much.